Uh, this past Wednesday morning, I had a job interview at Wegmans, okay? And this job interview was for a position known as Evening Operations Manager. Uh, this position would be a promotion for me to a department management level role. And just to clarify here what I'm talking about, uh, just give you a brief overview of how the positions work at Wegmans in the store. First, there are customer service level positions. Those are entry level positions uh, where uh, employees prepare product and they engage with customers. Uh, and so if you walk in the store and you cash out with a cashier, uh, that cashier is a customer service level employee. Um, but departments have them as well. Uh, Beth works in the cheese department right now over there, and she's uh, cutting product, packaging product. Uh, that's a customer service level, entry level position. Next, you have a coordinator. That is the first level supervisor. Um, the coordinators know every aspect of the department they're working in, and they're able to troubleshoot some problems, and they're able to uh, direct some traffic. And so again, they know everything about the department. Uh, and if you're at Wegmans and you're seeing, you're cashing out, and you see some of those people walking around the registers, answering lights, and kind of whenever there's a problem, they'll come and stick a little key in and fix it. Those are coordinators, okay? They're the first level supervisors. Um, next, uh, you have team leaders, okay? And team leaders are that next level of supervisor above coordinators who can, do, who can do more department level management tasks. They can order product if they're in a department, they can write schedules, they can do a lot of things uh, that department managers can do and they tend to be there to fill in for the department managers on the days that they're off. Um, I am actually at this level now, I am a team leader at Wegmans, um, and then there's department managers themselves, and these are the heads of the departments. Uh, you have cheese departments, you have dairy department, you have grocery, they always have one department manager that's overseeing the entire thing. Um, and that is the level of position uh, that I would be applying for, that I am applying for now. And if I was to get that position, I would be more directly responsible for what happens in the store from the hours to four, from the hours of four to twelve on a consistent basis. And it's a great opportunity, and it's been presented to me relatively quickly. And to put this in perspective, I started at Wegmans a little over two years ago as a part-time cashier. And in that short time, I've been promoted to a full-time coordinator and a full-time team leader. And now I'm being considered for department manager. And I'm saying to put this in perspective because there are part-time employees uh, that were there when I got there and are still part-time just trying to get hired full-time. And there are coordinators that I used to answer to when I first got there that now answer to me, okay? And if any of you are saying to yourself right now, Dan, this sure seems like you're talking about yourself an awful lot right now. Does it seem that way? Uh, yeah, bear with me. Uh, I promise you that I'm gonna talk about myself some more. Um, and then there's gonna be a point. There's, I'm setting this up for a reason, okay? So if you think I'm here to self-aggrandize, um, that's not exactly the point. Look at the title. There's a reason I'm going, I'm, I'm going somewhere, okay? I promise you. But here's how I came to interf interviewing for this position. I became aware of this position when I was being promoted to the current job that I have. I didn't even know it existed. And I began researching it and discovered that there was an opening for this position at my store. Not everyone knew about it. I found out that it was actually there. And I found that it was at least possible that I could post for this position. Uh, it, was relative, it was very fast uh, to post for it when I, when I originally asked, but it was not entirely unprecedented. There were some rare cases where they made some exceptions. And so I reached out to the Human Resource Department and expressed interest in this position and asked about it. And I was eventually sent to a division Human Resources representative and asked her about it. And she she said, maybe eventually you can post for it. Uh, don't, be, don't think you can post for it right now. Um, it's, uh, this is the kind of thing that your store management needs to sign off on before I will consider it as well, and you don't have that right now. So um, I, I, I'm going to register your interest. That's fine. Um, I will even reach out to your store management and let them know. But uh, until you hear from them, if and when you do, leave it here for now, you know, that would be the appropriate thing. I said, totally fine, no problem. Thanks for hearing me out, we parted ways, and, and, and I said, fine. That was last November. You know, I asked, they said, wait, you'll hear from us if it's a go. That was last November. I heard nothing for a while. Went all the way through December, heard nothing. Into January, I finished up my training for the job that I was in. Uh, in February, I got my first line of reviews, and they were all very good, and, and, and such things as that. And then in, at the very beginning of March, at the very beginning of this month, I got called in to the office uh, of my store manager. 
And she said to me, I mean, I didn't even know what she was asking. She said, can you come see me? I was like, oh, what'd I do? You know, that kind of thing. I had forgotten all about this. And she says, do you want to post for Evening Ops? Go ahead, you can post for it. And I was like, oh, I'd forgotten all about it. I said, great. So I went ahead and I posted for it. And they endorsed me uh, the way the, the uh, human resource persons that they needed to. And later that week, I was at a training day for team leaders and that same human resource uh, manager that I spoke to uh, from the division, she saw me. She lit up. She says, hey, Dan, I got your posting. She congratulated me on getting the endorsement. She says, this is really great. I even sensed in her a little bit of surprise, like, wow, that really, that happened pretty fast. You know, I mean, I sensed that from her. Uh, and uh, she set up an appointment with me, and she says, I'm going to come to your store, and I'll do your interview personally, personally. And she set up an appointment with me, and she came to the store to interview me. Now, why am I sharing all of this? Am I... Uh, Am I using the pulpit here to, to express how wonderful I am? No, that's not the goal. Um, my point here is, is that I had been racking up some wins uh, for a little while now, and I've been getting pretty used to these wins, okay? And after a while, when you keep racking up wins, uh, it can have an effect, and here's what I mean. Uh, she shows up for the interview. I walked into the interview, and I have to admit, I was feeling relatively confident. Um, I was feeling, I was not particularly nervous. I was feeling as though I've got this, you know. Every time I've put my hand to something, it's gone pretty well, I've got this, no problem at all. I, maybe I'll just crush this thing like I've been crushing everything else. And I went into that interview and guess what happened? I bombed it. Bad. Ah, oh, it, was, it was so bad, folks, it was so bad. I, um, I stuttered, I stammered, uh, I rambled answers instead of answering them clearly. There was a couple questions where they asked for specific examples of problems and I blanked out and I couldn't think of the right answer. Um, and uh, it just didn't go well. Have you ever had a job interview where you're just like, that was really bad. I'm not getting that job. <laughs> they say, we'll let you know. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. I know what that means. You know, that kind of thing. I walked into the office with my head held pretty high. But I walked out completely deflated. I mean, I was just, oh. And uh, my store management asked uh, shortly afterward, they said, how'd it go? And I said, uh, it didn't go well. They were like, no way. It could, you know, of course it went well. Everything you do goes well. I said, no, I'm telling you, <laughs> this didn't go well. Um, and I do tend to be overly critical of myself. Um, and so everyone that I've talked to have said, no, actually, you're fine. It's not as bad as you think. You know, uh, one of the... The, the people I talk to that does interviews says you're allowed to blank out once in a while because of the questions. It's you're probably not as bad as you think. Uh, I haven't heard back yet. It's too early to know. But I'm still pretty sure that I flopped this thing and then I'm not going to get the job, okay? Um, and enough time has passed now for me to uh, pick myself up off the floor and move on. And in doing so, it was a healthy thing, and it helped to teach me a few lessons about failure, all right? And I kind of wanted to talk to you about that this morning. I wanted to give you a couple lessons on failure that I learned, uh, that I also see a precedent for in the scripture, and there are three lessons there, all right? Three lessons on failure. Firstly, uh, failure is painful, okay? Failure is painful. It seems like an obvious thing to say, uh, but here's what I mean. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, this experience knocked me down for about 24 hours. I mean, it took me out, uh, more so than I thought. Again, for about a day, uh, the interview happened at 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning. I was in a funk the whole rest of the day, and I mean, I just couldn't concentrate, and I was just like, stupid, stupid. You know, you ever just like, oh, you know, it's just so tough. Um, I just could not, I was just so upset with myself. And that night, I went to go to sleep. I kept waking up in the middle of the night, you know, going, oh, you know, I just, I'm punishing myself in my brain at night. It was just terrible. And uh, I just kept beating myself up over it. It lasted about 24 hours. Eventually, the pain subsided, uh, but not right away. And the question I want to explore, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. We've all had these experiences. Uh, but why did I fall into such a funk like that? Why is failure so painful? Um, I would argue that the answer is self-expectation. Uh, when you expect a certain level of performance from yourself and you miss that bar that you set for yourself, it hurts. It is painful 
and there is a reset time while the perspectives get all set into line. And I just gave you an example of how it happened to me, but I want to give you an example of how it happened in Scripture. There's a pretty classic one. It's in Luke chapter 22. If you want to turn there now, I'm going to show you some passages from Luke chapter 22. In Luke chapter 22, with Peter, we see this in verse 31. Jesus predicted his failure, okay? He predicted his failure right here in verse 31. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and you when once you have been turned again, strengthen your brothers. And look also to verse 34. And he said, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied three times that you know me. And so do you see here that Jesus is clearly predicting? He says, you're going you're gonna to flop. You're going to nosedive. You're going to crash. You're going to fail. Very clearly saying that to Peter. But look at the way Peter responds to this information. We see Peter's response in verse 33. But he said to him, this is Peter, Lord, with you I am ready to, to both uh, go to prison and to death. He protested furiously. And do you see in this a sense of self-expectation? Jesus said, you're going to deny me. He said, there's no way that is going to happen. I'm going to follow you into prison. I'm going to follow you to death. He did not think it was possible that he could ever do such a thing. He didn't think it was possible that he could fail in that way. Do you see the, the self-expectation that is there? And yet he did, didn't he? And when he did, what was his emotional response immediately following? We see it a little later in the chapter. We see it in verses 61 and 62. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. This is after the denials. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he told him that before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Do you see how it just completely laid him out? You know what I mean? It laid him out. And, and I think we read this and yeah, there's guilt and there's shame and all those things. I get all of that. Uh, but what's happening here as well, um, he, it's, what's happening is, is that he had an expectation of himself that was here. And he came in way down here. And whenever that happens, there is just, there's a resetting and it, there's emotional trauma involved. It's painful. And that's what's going on here. Peter was broken as a result of it. You know what I think personally? When, when Peter said this right here, I'm ready to go to both prison and to death, I think he meant every word of it. I think when he said that, he was absolutely certain that that's exactly what he was going to do. He meant it with all of his heart. He wasn't using those words passively. He believed it was true. And yet when push came to shove, what did he do? He denied him. And when that reality came into play, it just crushed him. It just devastated him. He thought he was stronger. He found out he wasn't. And it was devastating to him. Make sense? Failure is painful. It's very painful for that reason. We set expectations for ourselves. We don't meet them. And when that happens, it crushes us. It's painful. But here's the thing. As painful as failure is, it is also beneficial. Failure is beneficial. Does that sound hard to believe? Is it possible that our failures can be beneficial to us? We see it right here in the same text that we looked at before. Just as Jesus predicted Peter's failure, he also predicted the benefit that the whole experience would be for him in his ministry. And we see that in verse 33. And so I'm going to let, give you just another second here. But in verse 33, this is the verse, or 32, I should say, um, we should, uh, we skipped over this verse when we read the first time, but it says, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and you, once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Jesus was saying that Peter would strengthen the brethren as a result of his failure. What are we, say, what are we saying here? Um, I think it's not an understatement to say that part of the reason that Peter was the apostle that he was, part of the reason that Peter was the spiritual giant that he was, and that he had such an effect upon the church is because of the failures that he endured. 
Uh, he failed, he learned, he came back stronger, and he's all the better for it. It benefited him. I don't believe, think we'd have the Peter that we did in the church age if he didn't fail first. Failure is painful, but, but it sets us straight. Failure is painful, but it humbles us, and we are better generally for the experience. And in the same way, flopping that interview knocked me out for about a day. I mean, it really messed with my head. I was really upset with myself about it. But I'm a few days in now. It happened Wednesday. Um, I'm actually already glad it happened. I'm, I'm already past it now. Um, it revealed weaknesses that I didn't know that I had. Um, I, to be honest with you, uh, as the interviewer was asking me questions uh, that I didn't have the answer to at the time, I realize now that part, th these are weaknesses that I have. Uh, I need to grow in these areas. The stuff that she's asking me specifics on are things that she expects people that are leading at that level should know. And I, I didn't necessarily have the answers. What does that mean? There's weaknesses there that were exposed. That's good. That's healthy. That helps me to be able to grow. Uh, it gives me some targeted focus, some feedback to be able to grow on. Um, and so I'm going to do the work to follow up and get better at those things whether I get the job or not, I may still get it. I, I don't think I'm going to, but if I still, if, even if I don't get it, I'm going to work on it. But if I do get it, I'm still going to work on it. It was just such a, it was a helpful experience. Once the emotions of it passed, you can start seeing the areas uh, that you can grow, and I'm better for it. And if nothing else, along the way, I'm going to talk to other people that bomb an interview. You know what I mean? They're going to come out of there with their head down. I'm like, hey, buddy. <laughs> Let me tell you about the time that I bombed an interview. You know, you ever, you ever do, sometimes you've got to be in the trenches. You've got to feel it to be able to empathize with them. I'm better for it. I'm going to be able to strengthen my peers as a result of it. It's a good thing for me. It's a blessing. It's beneficial. And shifting back towards the interview a little bit more, the last thing that I uh, really learned is this, and that is that success comes in God's time. Um, Sometimes things don't pan out for a reason. Sometimes they just don't pan out for a reason. Maybe the reason is that God's timing isn't now. Maybe the timing is wrong. Maybe, has, maybe God has something better in mind later down the way. And I share this because this was a confusing experience for me. I'm being honest with you. I mean, I was a little confident. I mean, I, I, I'm, sure I'm, I'm sure I was, and that's probably why I was so upset when I did poorly, but I wasn't like puffed up beyond measure. I wasn't walking around in, in an overly arrogant way, and I wasn't so arrogant that I didn't do my homework going into this interview. Uh, I still took it seriously going in. I did my homework. I prepped in advance. I, I did the work that I was supposed to do to be ready for it, and nonetheless, even though I put the effort in when I got in there, I just wasn't finding the words. They just weren't coming to me. You ever have that happen? You just, bleh, you're not syncing up with the person you're talking. It just wasn't coming together. And I, why? You know, I was, at, I was scratching my head. What happened here? You know, why, why didn't I think of this when I was in there? What, what was going on there? Sometimes that's God's way of saying, not right now. You know, sometimes it's God pulling his hand off you uh, as well. Because uh, a lot of the success we have in life is God's hand. And we sometimes think it's our own. Uh, but sometimes we think it's our own, and then God pulls his hand off for a second, and you go, bleh, and then you realize just how successful you are without God. Um, I, uh, I'm reminded of that uh, VeggieTales song, The Yodeling Veterinarian of the Alps. You guys ever, you guys ever read that? You, or not read that. You ever hear that song, The Curious Ways of the Yodeling Veterinarian of the Alps? If you haven't, Google it. What's that? Oh, yeah. You, I, I, you don't want me to do it. Um, the long story short, though, is there's this, uh, this guy who, uh, who thinks that when he yodels to people, it, it, it makes them well when they're sick. And so he goes up to him and he yodels and then they get better. But what's really happening is, is his assistant is coming in behind them and treating their illness and then they're getting better. And so the whole time he's yodeling, everyone's looking at him strange and then, and then the other guy comes in behind and fixes him. And then this guy thinks it was him that did it with his yodeling. And finally he, qu he doesn't give the, his assistant a pay raise and the guy quits and then he tries to go yodel and nothing happens, you know. And it's, it's, sometimes that's kind of the way it is. Yeah, he gets mauled by a bear. I, you need to go back and watch the, uh, the video. Um, so you're right, it's worse than nothing happens. The bear comes and starts attacking him. But uh, uh, the point being here is, is that 
we can go along and we can experience, experience success and we can tr chalk up some wins and we can think that it's us doing it. And maybe we are putting the effort in, but so much of that, it, the, the, most of it is God's hand is on you and he's giving you success. And the minute he takes his hand off for whatever reason, that's going to go away immediately. And sometimes he does that just to bring some humility. Sometimes he does it when he pulls his hand off. It's just because this isn't the right time, you know. And so the, this interview, I'm not going to let it go through right now because I have something better down the way that might work out a little bit better for you. Um, either way, best not to overthink it. Just you've done your best. It didn't pan out. Success comes in God's time. He's in charge. It's okay. Life is going to go on. And once the emotions pass, you're able to do that a little bit more. Uh, I recall the job that I have now, um, I wanted to get sooner than I got. Um, I had in mind to get the job that I currently have. Um, oh, let's see, I wanted to get it right around the beginning of last year. Uh, but the, at the, around the beginning of last year, instead of promoting me to a team leader, they sent me to the seafood department to work in the seafood department for several months and said they'd promote me more towards the middle of the year. And I can remember hearing that at the time and being really kind of disappointed, not really wanting to go do that, being frustrated by it. Uh, but I went over and did it. Uh, and I learned so much about Perishable and, and that whole side of the store. And that's what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to go over and learn that stuff before I got promoted. And I did that. And I was able to get that opportunity in a way that others were not. And I came out of it a much better team leader as a result. I was better because I waited. Maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe God is just saying, it's a little too soon. Let me, let's just hold off for a little bit. You know, either way, um, it's going to be okay. Success comes in God's time. And so I don't know what's going to happen yet with this job. I'll keep you posted. Maybe I didn't bomb it. I really think I did. I think I did. But if I didn't, you know, I'll let you guys know. Either way, I'm the better for this regardless. I'm actually almost, I can pretty much confidently say now I'm, I'm kind of glad it happened because I'm going to be either better at the job if I get it or I'm going to learn from these mistakes and I'm going to be better the next time around. Either way, um, I'm better for it. Uh, and my question for you is, is, are you wrestling with any failure in your life right now? Any setbacks like that where you're kind of kicking yourself and where you didn't meet the expectations you had for yourself? And what my hope is, is that you would realize that there's pain in the moment when it happens. Uh, but these failures are, are beneficial in the long run if you lean into them and you glean the lessons that God wants to teach you through them. And you will come out the, the other side of them better and stronger and more capable and more of a witness than you were before. So embrace your failures, lean into them, and uh, let's pray together, shall we?